Let us pray. God of love, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we hear your word today and as we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Listen now to what the Spirit may have to say to the church. On this mountain of the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples. The sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. In the disgrace of his people, he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Remember these words from Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A person I follow on Twitter shared recently that one year they were sitting around the Thanksgiving table, surrounded by their large family, and at a lull in the conversation, their mom looked around the group and said, you know, one of us will attend all of our funerals, <laughs> and another one of us will only attend our own. Now this is true, and probably not something we want to think about or dwell on, at least not at the Thanksgiving table or any time. But worship on All Saints Sunday invites us to reflect on a version of this idea, of our connection with people who have gone before us in death, on our hope that death is not the ultimate boundary between we who live and all who die in faith, and that in life and death, we belong to God. It's been said we live our lives between the baptismal font and the communion table. 
from those waters of new birth in our infancy or whatever age in this life to the joyful feast of the people of God in an age to come. That's our life, from the back of the sanctuary to the front, from font to feast. And for some of us, the journey is long, and for others, the journey is so much shorter than we hoped or expected. And all along the way, in this in-between called life, there's joy and there's laughter. There's hope. There's healing. There are moths on porch lights on summer evenings, and hands in hot dish water and sipping coffee in storefront windows as the city bustles past. In life, there are children bounding through rooms, and music, and wit, and art, and laughter, and touch, and desire, and breath, and bread, and cabernet, and on, and on, and on. Life, in all of its vast array. Today, we remember the lives of people who died over millennia, some of whom we knew and loved deeply. We hold them in our hearts today. Most of them, we don't know. And we claim a hope of our faith that a life in all of its beauty and messiness and fragility doesn't just dissipate into meaninglessness at the moment of death, but rather this life continues to spring forth somehow as it always does, God ever making all things new. Bruce Modell is a Lutheran pastor in North Florida, and he tells the story of how one time one of his church members called him up and asked that he visit her cousin in the hospital. The member explained that the cousin's cancer had spread and that the doctors weren't recommending further treatment. She and her family didn't go to church, so this member hoped that the cousin would still accept a pastoral visit. Pastor Bruce reluctantly agreed and went to the hospital. And he writes, I poked my head in the door. Theta, the cousin, was flat on her back. Her husband, George, was propped up beside her in a chair. What struck me about them was that they were doing nothing. They weren't talking or watching TV or reading the newspaper. They were just sitting and looking. I figured they were actually quite busy every ounce of them, every neuron and muscle working to get their minds and emotions around the diagnosis they just received. He says, I introduced myself, and the first thing Theta said to me was, we don't go to church. It wouldn't make any difference in how we lived, so we don't. She looked at her husband for confirmation, which he gave with a nod. And Bruce reflects what I wanted to say to them, what I so wanted to say but didn't, was so church wouldn't make any difference in how you live, but would it make a difference in how you die? That's the question I wanted to press on them. That's the question that might have made my visit helpful for All Saints Day reminds us that faith makes a difference in how we die. We die in hope. And because we die in hope, it makes a difference in how we live. Today, when we sing the hymns and pray the prayers and hear the music and keep the silence and receive communion and light the candles, we're joining our minds and our hearts, our hands and our voices to the communion of saints, that celestial assembly of our shared memory, all who have completed their journeys from font to table, all who have lived and died in faith. Today, I sing alongside the voices of my grandmothers, Avis and Shirley, alongside the voices of folks whose names we'll read later in worship. I'll hear the voice of Tom Craig, our great choir friend, who loved singing gospel songs about going to heaven. Sing on, Tom. 
We sing alongside all the people we hold in our hearts this day who have died, and we who live on this side of the mystery of life and death are surrounded and upheld by our visions of these folks for whom the other side of death's curtain is no longer a mystery, only knowing, and always knowing and rejoicing that death didn't get the final word on their lives, as death doesn't get the final word on ours, for those words belong to Christ, who says, awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and I'll shine on you. There's a 20th century hymn called Beyond the Sunset. I don't know it, so I'm not going to sing it. But I like the story of its composition. Virgil Brock had dinner guests on a beautiful evening in 1936 on Monona Lake in Indiana. Before dinner, the group watched an unusual sunset together. Brock wrote that a large area of the water appeared ablaze with the glory of God. Yet there were threatening storm clouds gathering overhead. Returning to our home, we went to the dinner table, still talking about the impressive spectacle we'd witnessed. One of the guests was Virgil's cousin, Horace, and Horace was blind, yet he remarked that it was the most beautiful sunset he'd ever seen. Virgil said to him, Horace, people are always amazed when you talk about seeing. Horace replied, oh, I can see. Through other people's eyes, I can see. And I think sometimes I see more. I see beyond the sunset. So, friends in Christ, on this All Saints Sunday, I hope God blesses the eyes of your heart to see beyond the sunset, whatever it is that may lie there, and whoever it is who may be there, I hope that Christ's body died and then raised and ever made flesh in you and in me and in all who have gone before grants you hope to live in as it grants us all hope to die in. And I hope that God's life-giving spirit renews the face of your world today as ever as we love and serve one another as unto Christ making real God's promise to us to be making all things new today and tomorrow and the next day and the next. Amen.